Right, today's job is going to be to get the ceiling and the walls started. Now, of course, the first thing I could do is just plasterboard the whole lot and skim it all, putting corner beads and stop beads on. But what I want to make sure I've got is um, future proofing when this oak starts to shrink. If you try and skim up to the oak, it's going to pull away over the next few months and the years and you'll end up with a gap and it just can look untidy. So I'm intentionally going to have a shadow gap all the way around here and finish up to that. Now I could again use plasterboard and put a stop bead there or you can actually get these little reveal beads. But what I've decided to do is actually start trimming this out with MDF instead and have like a panelled effect. So whereas on the ceiling I've got 800mm of insulation between the joists and then a layer of 25 underneath. With the upstand I can't really afford to do that because I'll start losing a lot of the glazing and it, it just won't look right. Um, so I've got insulation between all the timbers and of course we've still got insulation the other side of this joist. But what I'm going to do is now trim it out but before I've done that I've just put, used some of this floor underlay which I know is not the norm but it's acting one as our vapor barrier which we need anyway but it's three or four mil thick and it might just help by just giving a bit of a thermal break. Okay so we'll come back to the insulation details in just a bit. As far as the MDF goes, yes, you could use a moisture resistant MDF, but around me, it's only 18 mil that's stocked, so it would have to be special order. Um, but what you can do is you could paint or prime the back of these boards as another step to make it more durable. I didn't even do that, because at the end of the day, if you're that worried about your ceilings and walls getting damp, you've got quite a problem with your building fabric. If you've gone to the lengths you have of waterproofing and sealing up your building, it shouldn't really be an issue. Another thing I've done is where I've got insulation butting up against our oak. Like I said, because we're expecting that oak to shrink, uh, you could end up with quite a either drafty gap uh, or also you could end up seeing the silver. Um, so what I've done is use more of this expanding EPDM or expanding foam tape, which is great because it can compress to almost nothing whilst we want it to. But if this does open up a little gap, it'll just be a little black shadow line. But likewise, I'm gonna use this tape up there as well. And that means when we look down out of any of the upstairs windows, you don't see any of this insulation or silver foil or the top of edge of a plasterboard. Um, and it just fit, finished it off neatly. So that's what I'm gonna use this for now. There you go, that's what the foam tape's like. And basically we're gonna push this up against the glass. What that'll do is make sure that there's, well, I mean, there is a little bit of a thermal break there, but also that um, it completely seals the trim against the glass. And the design I'm going for up here will mean that our bottom rail that goes across here and the top will hide all those and on the corners, so there's not even any filling to do. So that's both of those trimmed out and they look pretty plump, I'll double check them in a second. So what we need to do now is cut the two angled sections. Now I already know the height of this one, the height of that one. So all I really need to do is cut the, uh, measure this width and then cut that angle. Now the next abnormal technique I'm going to use is on the ceiling because I'm going to use the same same stuff, same 9mm board, maybe 12mm. Um, like I mentioned, I want to create a shadow gap by routing the edges of the outside of the MDF. I can create that nicely. 
if I did do it with plaster water, I'd have to put a stop bead on and I'd have to use plastic or aluminium because there's always a risk of the, even galvanized steel might blacken the oak uh, if it was anywhere near it. So let's not go that route and let's stick with my crazy harebrained plan. What I'm thinking is a whole lot goes up covering all this and then we'll just use a flush trim bit running on the inside of this opening. Go slot. No, then we can go slot, slide. a bit dull in here now I've blocked off the light. Um, let me show you what I'm on about with this shadow gap nonsense. So I've put a chamfer on the on the edge of this MDF and there's also about two or three mil of foam although some of that is shadow. Um, so that is what I'm expecting it to look like after I don't know a year or two. So to start with I'm gonna almost take it tight maybe a millimeter gap Well, it might not be conventional, but I think it's, it's gonna work fine. So the next thing to do is to cut out our hole. It's the next morning and I've got some progress to share with you. So most people who go for these flat roof lights tend to just skim up to a corner bead and skim in and keep it all quite simple and modern, um, which is what I was gonna do. And then when I started looking at doing that detailed shadow gap, I thought, oh, well, why don't I trim this out a bit and do this in more of a style that you might have with a lantern or a 
if you had like an orangery roof or something. Um, just adds a bit more character to it. All of this is going to get sprayed white, so it's going to be very subtle. It's not going to be too much, too distracting, but um, it's a bit of fun. Anyway, so what I've done is just trimmed everything out. Um, as far as the details go, uh, this is 60 mil. It's basically the same as the shaker paneling I did in the room next door, um, albeit I've reduced it to 60 mil. And in the corners where you've got one piece butting up to the other, you just need to account for that. So I've done those at 69 mil so that the 60 piece sits in against that and they both end up equal. Um, before I get asked numerous times in the comments, this nailer, I will leave a link to it down in the description, but it's the Ryobi one. I don't have any Ryobi tools apart from this. And while I don't like loads of different batteries, there's nothing really that compares to this on any of the battery platforms that I use that's cost effective. I don't use it day in, day out, and it's not a work tool or anything like that. So 18 gauge nailer, they do a 16 as well. Um, but it's fine. I mean, it does, there's no cords to mess around with, no gas, and I've done it on hardwoods and softwoods, um, and even tacking fencing in place before I nail off with a big nailer. Um, but you can't really go wrong for the money. It's it's awesome. All right, next job is going to be moving on to this wall. For this wall, I'm using 12 mil, and I'm going to do the same um, chamfered edge around the outside to create our shadow gap, and we'll put a foam seal in there. Good. Let's go cut that. Right, let's go see how that fits. I think that's a quite nice actually having that gap. Definitely. Definitely the right of the shout. I'm actually going to spray all of our trim work uh, in the next day or two in there. I'm going to mask everything off and spray it all nicely. Um, but because this is going to be pretty tight up against the oak, I'm just going to do the edges. We're going to end up everything in white anyway. Just going to go around with some Zinza bin. <laughs> Final addition to that trim, I've just put a little demolding, which I had some left over around on the underside. In another episode of crazy hairbrained unconventional ideas from Tim, um, this wall here, like I've explained, we've got our stud wall in between our oak frame, which is fine, and we've got loads of insulation between our studs, but we haven't got the option to insulate on the inside of the studs here because we come out beyond the oak and it would just it just wouldn't look right or we'd end up having to lose all of the oak, which would be counterproductive. So, sneaky idea, rather than just have nothing there at all, what I'm gonna use, I needed some for the floor anyway, uh, this is XPS, which is essentially a type of insulation, um, but this is underlay for vinyl floors or wooden floors. This is vapor type, so it will create a vapor barrier, although we've already got one here. Um, but XPS is not a bad idea in that it will give a little bit of a thermal break between 
the wall and here. But even more, we've got you know the road outside between the MDF and this. I think this should work work pretty well to deaden it. I mean, this is an acoustic type underlay as well. So we're just kind of underlaying onto the wall, if that makes sense. Plus it's black, which means our shadow gap around the outside of our panel will remain black. So I'm going to leave this video there, there was endless other bits I started adding in door linings and architraves and mouldings and this extra bit of wall on the right which we'll come back to in a future video. But all that just happened in the days that followed and next week there'll be a load more videos because we're looking at getting it all prepped up and ready for painting. So thanks for watching, remember if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.